Hey guys, this is EC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is what the pressure range needs to be for R22 and 410A uh, on the low side. Okay, so regardless of whether you're checking subcooling or superheat, if your system's low, you want to make sure that you get the refrigerant up above the freezing level. So the freezing level would be your saturated temperature. So the outer ring is PSIG, pounds per square inch gauge. Okay, um, this green section here is an inch HG, and that is a uh, inches of mercury, okay, that's be like in the negative, okay, um, and the green, if you follow the green ring around, uh, that has to do with the saturated temperature, okay, saturated means liquid and vapor both exist at the same time in that area, all right, and pink uh, or light, uh, light pink or rose, all right, same thing, that's the saturated temperature, and then also you have orange, which is 404A, and you can follow that around as well. So basically you have your dial, you just would follow that in from the PSIG into the temperature, and that will be what it is, the actual temperature in the middle of the evaporator coil. So when you can't even get to it, the system is closed, you know, the, the, the cover's on, you know roughly uh, what that temperature is in the middle of the evaporator coil. All right, so um, you say you, you know, you normally turn the system on, let it run five, 10 minutes, and then you start checking the refrigerant charge. Uh, but during that time period while you're waiting, you notice that you have a vapor pressure of 40, okay, PSIG. You need for, just say it's R22, okay, that will be low. Uh, if it was 40, you're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of 16 degrees in the middle of the evaporator coil. And if you wait 5, 10 minutes, what's going to happen is uh, that evaporator coil is going to end up freezing. Um, and it's going to actually have frost on the outside of the coil and it's not gonna be able to absorb the heat from the air within the house, which is called the conditioned air, all right? So what you really need to do is you need to start getting the vapor pressure up to maybe the level of about, say, 60 PSIG or, or so, something like that, okay? 60 PSIG comes over, you're looking at about 33 degrees in the middle of the evaporator coil for R22, all right? So that will be above freezing. So you make sure that you get your vapor pressure up above freezing. So the temp, or actually the pressure that you would like to see for R22 will be say like 60 to say maybe 83 or so, all right? 83 being a very hot and humid um, in, inside the house, hot and humid inside the house, all right? Because this has to do with the evaporator coil, all right? Um, if it was down real low and maybe it was at say 60 PSIG and just say the refrigerant charge was correct, well, maybe the house is already down to say 63, um, 65 degrees inside that house. And that will be a reason why that, that that pressure is down lower on this side right here, okay? Um, so you wanna have a load on the house. You want it to be warm outside, 70 degrees. You want the inside of the house to be maybe right around 70 or something like that, you know, um, just to, in order to check um, the pressure. So it's not always that you wanna get a 40 degree evaporator coil or something like that. Um, it's going to change depending on the temperature in the house. But the biggest thing is, uh, when you start a unit up, you wanna make sure that the evaporator coil is above freezing. So it has to be above 32 degrees, which we'll say, we'll say the cutoff somewhere is around 59, 60 degrees, I'm sorry, 59 to 60 PSIG for the outside. You follow that in, it's about 32, 33 degrees for R22. All right, so now let's talk about 410A, all right? So uh, the, freezing temperature for that, we'll say that's about 100, about 100, we'll say. 100 PSIG is going to equal roughly right around 32 degrees for 410A. So 100, 100 PSIG, you come in and you're looking at a 32 degree evaporator coil or 31.5 or something around in that area, okay? Now this pressure temperature chart is not gonna be as exact exact as say, one that you might get from DuPont or something like that. So you can have that as well, but this is gonna get you pretty darn close, um, especially when you're looking at it straight ahead, which I'm not doing right now, um, but uh, you know, you can follow that dial in to the 410A vapor range. So even if you're checking 410A and subcooling, which is normally done because you normally are running into systems that have TXVs for comfort cooling in, in homes and businesses, um, you still wanna get the vapor pressure up above freezing. So if you see after two minutes and you're stuck at a vapor pressure of 75 PSIG, if you follow that in, uh, you 
are looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of 17 degree evaporator coil, and that coil is going to freeze, it's going to get frost on it, and you're no longer going to be able to absorb the temperature of the house, even if you raise the pressure up, because you're still below freezing, and the frost is going to um, stop you from absorbing it uh, well. Okay? So you want to make sure that you get that vapor pressure up. All right? Make sure when you're charging, you're charging through maybe a liquid uh, vaporizer, so you're not putting liquid into the compressor. But you're always, while the system's running, you're always going to be charging into the low side, okay, um, to be able to raise the pressure up. All right, I hope that helps. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we will see you next time, AC Service Tech Channel.